Hello, how y'all doing? Welcome to Book Reviews by Bird, Mania and Devil Productions. I'm your host, David E. McClendon Sr., and we'll roll into our video in just a second, but first a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the many blessings you bestowed upon us. Thank you for our YouTube watchers, all of our blog followers, all of our blog readers, all the publishers, publicists, authors, illustrators, merchandisers, manufacturer representatives, and others that we come in contact with via these blogs and these YouTube channels. If there's anyone out there seeking to find you, please help them to find you. It's in Jesus Christ, Yeshua's most holy and most precious name that we pray by the power of his blood. Amen. Broken Business, Seven Steps to Reform Good Companies Gone Bad by Jose R. Hernandez. It's not a question of if your company is going to find itself in a crisis situation. It's a question of when. No matter what, every company has something that uh, has been missed or is intentionally, a problem intentionally taking place or whatever that eventually is going to come around. Eventually it's going to be a crisis unless you nip it in the bud, unless you catch it early. And that's where good programs on ethics, good programs on oversight, uh, help to mitigate any kind of problems, help to catch them early. Now, back when I was uh, working many, many years ago in a Fortune 500 company, but the problem was taking place in the small branch where I worked, there was a group of salesmen that uh, wanted to more or less fudge, wanted to scam the system. And so they turned in contracts that for people that didn't exist. Now, everybody knew exactly what was happening. Everybody could see it. The frontline employees would uh, reported it to the sales manager, and he just kind of swept it under the rug, and then reported it to the general manager, and he did the same thing. But then when the... Uh, chips started to fall when things started to come around and happen they acted like they never heard anything they acted like they uh, had no idea what was going on and that's where I first heard the um, statement that the only way to get out of a problem is to sell your way out of a problem now in this book it gives you some general ideas about things that you can do to help mitigate possible uh, crisis coming it gives an example of like uh, Johnson & Johnson with the Tylenol problem about how they nipped that in the bud, how they came out a much better company because of the way they dealt with the crisis. But then you look at other companies that they just tended to ignore things thinking they were going to go away, and guess what? They never go away. Uh, if you want to put this in a political um, analogy or whatever, if you look back when President Nixon, when he was being accused of the whole Watergate scandals and stuff, if he'd have just come out and said, yeah, I, I did that, I was a part of that, or I knew about that, it all would have gone away. It wouldn't have been all of this um, uh, impeachment proceedings and lying before Congress and lying before the American people, all of that. It would have just gone away because people would, would have forgotten about it. It still would have come up, but uh, it wouldn't be the major hot news topic all the time. You look at with uh, Clinton, the whole Lewinsky thing. If he just come out and confessed, that would have only been between him and his family, not between him and the Congress, not between him and the rest of the country. That was something that would have just been between him and the country. It would have just been between him and his family, not between him and the country. Anyway, but then you look at Ronald Reagan with the Iran-Contra scandal. Um, there was some problems at first, but when he did come before the American people and said that, uh, yeah, it happened on his watch. Uh, he still, in his mind, he didn't think it did happen, but uh, he went ahead and said, hey, it happened on my watch and I'm responsible. And it went away for the most part. I mean, you know, it still comes up all the time, but it wasn't the main news story. It wasn't the main item. And with companies, if they just say, okay, well, yeah, this is wrong. You know, we did this wrong. We're going to fix it. It would go away. But the problems are not having the proper oversight. The problems are not tending to it right away and letting it get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's just like a, a, a physical problem that if you take care of it uh, early on, it, you know, it goes away usually. But uh, if you allow it to grow and fester, it just gets worse and more painful. Um, this book is very well written. It's very uh, interesting. It's very thought-provoking. It's something 
that if you are in the C-suite or if you are in any kind of management, you need to read. Even if you're on the um, lower lines of things, even if you're um, a small business, a very small business, one or two employees, you need to know what you need to know, which is you need to know that there needs to be accountability. There needs to be processes in place. It needs to uh, be some sort of procedure to follow to make sure that uh, everyone is doing what they're supposed to be doing because if you give a person uh, power, if you give a person authority, sooner or later something will come along that will tempt him. But my father used to say that you don't buy a lock to keep a thief out. You buy a lock to keep an honest man honest. And so you don't put these procedures in place to stop the real criminal element. You put these procedures in place to keep honest people honest. You remove the temptation. You make them know that there's a possibility they'll get caught and that there are consequences for it. And that's what this book is all about. It's about working to keep honest people honest. Now, we think it's very well written. We think that you need your copy today. And we thank you. Wow, Gindy, it a uh, good book. Yeah, Amy, it's a very good book. Uh, I think I should be able to uh, hire just one of these consultants to these crisis situations because, like, I can help them find where the bodies are buried. <laughs> That's kind of cute, Amy. Uh, yeah, me and my old buddy Archie, we're good at finding bodies. Archie? Archie who? Archaeologist, yeah. He's the guy that dug me up over near Egypt. Egypt, Texas, that is. Anyway, we think it's an excellent book, and you can pick up your copy today from wherever, Amazon, or wherever good books are sold. Thank you. Bye! Ready to order? Click the link below.